Everybody, this is the Sun Ranto Show. My name is Danny Rocket. We are a a podcast, technically, even though we're coming to you live on the Bleacher Bunch Network, and uh, it's got a bunch of great shows on it, like the Cubs PS Plus podcast that got released today. Of course, my show with uh, Sarah Sanchez is called Cup of Cubby Blue. Michael, you've been putting out your uh, baseball rabbit holes out through the Bleacher Bunch. I just I always forget to say. Bleed your bunch productions, so I figured I'd linger on it for a moment. But, um, and the Bleed your bunch productions is on the Fans First Network. But this show is basically brought to you by all of our Patreon Patreon supporters. Uh, thank you very much. There's 109 of you, and thanks to Terry who joined on this month. Uh, Patreon.com com slash sunranto is where you uh join up and hashtag chance in the chat if you'd like to win a frank chance postcard sent to you by me with a message of love and doom my name's captain danny rocket that right there is uh michael cotton pouring himself a bia and hopefully infield fly girl is going to be by shortly she's at the game right now she just got through the gates we got a text from her She's going to hopefully join us if the A, the internet is working because Lord knows he couldn't do this kind of thing at Wrigley Field. And right. B, um, if uh, she feels like it, because oh, I'm going to be seeing people and hanging out and stuff. You never know. I mean, where the it, night is, takes you. it is T Mobile, right? Isn't that the name of the park? And it's that like, is, I think if you have nothing. a park that's named after a cell service, you should really have like good cell service and allow people to do that kind of thing but you know oh, but I it mean, looks like uh there's we've got another rancher checking in from the game and t saying hey from the home plate gate line yeah i think that they're gonna uh her and uh ifg are gonna meet up tonight at some point sometime this weekend and uh and cory furlong is pointing out in the chat an hour earlier yeah i screwed up the time I j just put eight, even though I meant seven. And I, I know, Michael, you knew seven because you're here. You weren't thinking eight. But the game is at 830 Central. And we can't get a Sun Ranto show done in, in a half hour. Like, yeah, no way. So we go. Yeah. An, I mean, we are pushing the hour and a half. Let's just, yeah. you know. We, it's going to be the gonna... bottom of the third by the time we finish this shit <laughs> at, this, at this point. So, um I, I like having a, 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 like that sort of like the games coming up and we're doing this and we're getting it all, you know, it, it is kind of fun, like pre-gaming a little bit. Well, we used to do all the pre-games with Crawley, uh, the preview and the post game and everything, but, but, uh, we haven't done that in a while, uh, just because COVID's over, but, uh, we've got a special guest joining us live here, just right on cue. It's infield fly girl live from T-Mobile park. Hi, FG. Hi, everybody. Hey. hey. Uh, so, uh, it's how's it looking there? What's the weather like? Do they have the uh, roof open? It looks like. Yeah, roof is open. It's gorgeous out. Uh, temperature dropped probably about ten degrees since I did the weather report. Um, but it is. It's beautiful. This is going to be a lovely night for a game. We got. Uh, I'm standing right here by the bullpen here in the like the pen area uh, downstairs at the park. Just saw Keegan and Luke Little and Adbert doing a little throw in here. Um, they got the guys out there at uh, doing some batting practice. We nearly got hit by a baseball here about a minute ago. This is awesome. I love this part of the ballpark. Well, yeah, Keegan, that's cool. I haven't been to that ballpark. And Danny, you said you haven't been there either. I'm not right? either. 
Ke- well, Keegan Thompson, you just I quote unquote broke that news for this show anyway. You haven't talked about it yet. He's up for Quas. So Keegan's mm-hmm. with the team, and Quas is not in that bullpen right now. He and, is um, not. Could you give a quick <laughs> message to Adbert Alzali to please stop blowing saves because as he's really making us question our bullpen? Well, he was just out there working on something. They've got Good. the hottie Tom of these over here with all of his uh, equipment out, and Adbert just did a little bit of a throw-in session, so they're definitely working on something. Did you just say hottie Tom of She did. Did I lie? <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to unhear that. And I'm that call that's it uh, that's he's, her he's side looking. podcast, Hottie yeah. Tommy. Hottie Tom. He's a good looking man. He's probably sexier than most of the pitchers in the bullpen. So, oh, yeah. Well, uh, can y'all hear for, me? I'm like, we can hear is you it great. Too loud? Okay. No, good. It, sound, it sounds good. Uh, so, where are you sitting tonight? If people want to find uh, you and buy you a beer. Yeah, uh, I my tickets. Uh, it was ten dollar ticket night, so I bought the cheap ass seats up in the upper deck. Uh, so I'll probably like visit them for a minute and then just be wandering around the ballpark. Uh, ten dollar so ticket ridiculous- night. Yeah, man. And I got a and I got a hoodie out of it. It's great. So yeah, I saw that um, it was yeah. hoodie night. And tomorrow they're oh, giving beyond away a beyond the sweet morel hoodie that you're wearing. I guess it's not Beyond a hoodie. Beyond the it's a... sweet morel, it is a hoodie. Well, yeah. no, I know it has a hood, but it's not <laughs> a hoodie. It's a, what is it, like a cloak or something? Yeah, well, yeah, it, but... it is. It's a, it's like a cropped hoodie. I didn't I didn't take the sleeves off or anything. It's just like lined with a blanket, so it'll be nice and warm. Um, is this yeah, the debut I... of your Project Warning Track project? It is. Ah, nice. It is it? now ah. game worn. It is now yeah, well, game worn Christopher Morell crop hoodie. Well, I believe that we're going to be trendsetters on this entire uh, fashion thing because, you know, they put me on TV last Friday and Boog was Love like, that. oh, captain, my captain. And I'm just sitting oh, there shit. going, let's go, Cubs. They, they're they putting me on TV. I, I bet you you'll make uh, some sort of uh, television appearance at some point wearing that thing because people – or at least people will ask you where you got it, and you'll be like, I made it. You know, I yeah. made this my own self. I just so saw a guy our, in a Mark Pryor jersey. I'm going to have to get a picture of him later. <laughs> yeah, well, keep, you should keep the uh, j- fun jersey pictures coming. I loved it last year at the All-Star Game that you did, like, all the – the the TFCs of the people in fucked up jerseys and stuff that was great. I loved it. I ended up I, I ended up doing that for the whole rest of the season. And I got over seven hundred individual jerseys. Um, oh my gosh. So yeah, definitely keeping that up this year. It was so fun. It it starts so many conversations. I'm like, this is so much better than collecting baseball cards, right? You just run around. You ask me, hey, I love your jersey. Can I take a picture of your back? And then you end up with like a little conversation about why their jersey says what it says or where they got it or you know i love that stuff yeah it's a really good idea it, my my favorite one that was uh, last year was like uh wgn is greater than uh marquee did you see somebody made that jersey no oh, but that's- i love that yeah, I, I'll try to find that before the show's over. <laughs> it's, that was one of my favorites. It, it, it probably had this year's uh, letter size in order to fit all that on the jersey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what, what what's the crowd looking like so far? I mean, you see in a, it's early still. You still got over an hour, but you see a lot a lot of yeah. Cup fans showing up or what? Yeah, quite a few. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing a, a seeing some nice jerseys. It's, it's better than a lot of the ratios that you see. So I'm wondering if they're going to let me get through. I usually try to take a picture. There's a there's a mural on the wall, like right here ish, that says "Goodbye Home Run," but it looks like it's nope. They're not going to let me get through and take a picture of it this time. Sad face. Oh well. Uh, is it because it's it's still early? They won't let you get through. Uh, no, it's an entry gate, and they usually have it closed off, like, before that picture, so I can get in and get a selfie with it, because I just like that mural, and oh, uh, wow. and they've got it closed off after at this time. Yeah, I, I didn't know. <laughs> when you go to Coors, they will only let you into part of the stadium until, 
I don't know, a half hour before or something like that. So yeah, so, that's that is what they do here. Um, but here you get to be in the pen area where there's half price beer and there's all kinds of food and stuff. There's Edgar's Cantina, which is a good place to get a drink and watch the game. Um, and then they'll open up the staircase here, which looks like they just opened it up. People are starting to go up in and find their seats. Now, uh, but do other they, than that, do they have like Red Hook beer? And uh, I mean, when I lived out there, Red Hook was like the big Seattle beer, and that's what we all drank. Do they have that? Do they have Rainier beer, which would be like our 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 uh, old style would be Rainier? It, it is definitely the analogous to an old style. <laughs> yes, I'm not a huge Rainier fan. Uh, let's go see what's on tap today. They have kind of like a rotating tap situation. So let's see. Usually some kind of something or other. I am very close to the place where they have the half price beer. Looks like this one has got some uh, little things, hazy IPA here at the pizza shop. Uh, this is the cocktail bar where you can get a nice uh, lemonade or spike lemonade how, how or a much, mule. How much are the beers? That's what I want to know. That is a great question. So there's beer as low as $5 here at the park for a can. Um, these are, this is the draft area here. So this is the Miller Lite bullpen bar. And at the bullpen bar, uh, beers are half price until uh, about a half hour before the game starts. So we've got some Hop Valley stuff. We've got some Cryo Stash, Face Haze, uh, Wheat and Wheaty Bay. Yeah, some good stuff. And then there's like some Blue Moon and stuff. But uh, no Rainier on tap. You can probably find it in a can up at like the Amazon walk-in, walk-out store. Yeah. If you like, I, I, really I, like your bad beer. Yeah, I I tell you, I I learned how to drink for real in uh, Tacoma and Seattle because that was back mm -hmm. in the late '90s when uh, IPAs and shit were brand new. Nobody had them except for out there; they were everywhere, and I had no idea how strong they were. And I I just would go out and get freaking hammered. And have Hell no yeah. idea how I got home. Oh yeah, back in those days when you used to get drunk, you know. Do yeah, that I mean it doesn't happen very much anymore. Well, Corey <laughs> Furlong in the chat here says Red Hook. This issue Y two K cotton. It's like <laughs> it's true. Like you're, yeah. I bet you're drinking Sierra Nevada too. Like uh, yeah, cool. you know, I I still drink Sierra Nevada, and I would totally have Red Hook. I just I honestly they don't have it around here, so I didn't know if it was still like a major brewery out there but we drank the shit out of uh some red hook david wants to know if you see yensi almonte out there working as a ballpark beer vendor yet because uh there was a few <laughs> bullpen bullpen moves we were uh, hoping he I'll would get another it. job i'll keep an eye out during the game uh, yeah. that's funny i haven't seen him yet maybe he might be somewhere else he he and danny almonte will be hanging out later there you Who's go. Danny Almonte? He's no, that 13 year old that got busted because he was way too old to be pitching right. in the Little League World Series. Yeah. Well, oh. yeah. Way back. Way. That's old. Like, you want to talk last century. I mean, that was Danny Almonte. He was like this big ESPN story. Everybody loved him because he's such a good pitcher. And then they're like, oh, you're three years older than everyone else. Yeah. You're 43 <laughs> years old, sir. Um, yeah. So cool. Well, I hope you have a great yeah. time. I want to. I want to put you. up your i your IFG infield fly girl <laughs> Venmo. So I'm going to put this. I know a lot of you are watching on your phones right now, and you can't really, uh, you know, scan anything with your phone. Uh, but if you're not watching on your phone, you're holding your phone in your hand. Uh, then you can scan uh, her Venmo and give her some beer money tonight. Um, and maybe a hot dog or something. If you're not, if you are on your phone, her Venmo is at infield fly girl, G R L as girl, no I in girl. So I N F I E L D F L Y G R L on Venmo. Send her five, 10 bucks. Get, get her, get her night going. Get her some, uh, Rainier beer. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, get her some reindeers. Yeah, and, and well on her way. And maybe you'll even get enough to buy a beer for a rancher that's out there that you're meeting up with. Now, you're meeting up with Ann tonight, maybe? or? Uh, yeah, so uh, because it was 
you know, $10 ticket night. I bought a few diff a few tickets to see how many people I could get to come with me. Uh, so I had one left as of this morning, and uh, and I got that to Anne, so our, our, our beloved ranter, Anne, and so she's going to be up there with me up in the upper deck. Nice. Ooh. She's already checked in. She's Last we saw, Perfect. she was in line. Yeah, she awesome. said she was in line. So, well, have a blast. Get us a W <laughs> uh, after that losing two or three to the Padres. It could have gone better I got for my, us. I got my W flag ready to go. Brand new. Uh, Beautiful. Do not take it out early. Yeah. No. <laughs> in your bag. Yeah. You, I know you know. I, I'm really like jealous of you right now. Like you too. walking around and showing that off. It really like I really feel like oh, I just want to be at that game. Yeah. You know, like it does look nice there. Yeah. I, mean, I really you know, want to go sometime. Gorgeous. Maybe a couple in a couple years we'll we'll get out there. Because I they probably yeah. won't be there next year, but maybe the year after we can make a trip. But it didn't work out this time. But it worked out for you because you live there. And so have a freaking awesome time. And Thank um, you guys. Get, get the W and uh we'll talk to you. We'll pop in anytime within the next hour. Because we'll be here. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. All right. Have fun, All guys. Right. Spagog. Cool. Later. Bye. Spagog. Spagog. Yeah, yeah, I I totally am a little jelly because when I looked at the schedule this year, that was one that I circled because I've never been to T-Mobile Park. It's kind of far flung. I don't really have any other reason to go to Seattle except to maybe go to a Cubs Mariners game, you know. Yeah. So, but yeah, and I've never, I've never, I don't think I've ever even seen T-Mobile like in real life because when I was there, it was the Kingdom era. And I never went to a game because I was much younger and I was like, fuck a dome. I'm never going to a game at a dome. I'm just never going to do it. Oh, so you were always this curmudgeon -y guy that was just yeah. like, I'm not watching extra innings. I'm never sitting in a dome. <laughs> well, you know? no, 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 no. I, I love watching extra innings. If it's real baseball, they curve, change the fucking rules and you know, curve, whatever. Curve that flat brim, son. Yeah. <laughs> you look yeah. like a hippie. <laughs> 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 um, no, but it, so I, I don't know. I just didn't want to go, but I was there when they, they imploded the dome, the King dome. And I was a bartender at the time. And I was like, I was in the army, but on the weekends I'd, I'd bartend. And after I would get off my shift, there was a guy that lived upstairs from the bar who would hang out with me and we'd play pool and drink beer until dawn and the bar actually opened at like six and they would have breakfast so we would always have to leave at like 5 30 but we would stay there for a few hours afterwards and i was like hey you know they're gonna blow up the kingdom like do you want to go were you drunk in the middle of, in the morning watching the I, kingdom getting blown up I, I, yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean, That's fucking sweet, bro. That's freaking yeah. sweet. Yeah, I was I was young and doing stupid stuff, and so I yeah, we that with you. We jumped in, drove up to Seattle, and uh, parked, and then we walked down to as close like we got to the barriers. Like we were as close as you could be to when where they were gonna blow it up. And if anybody remembers, go back and look. It's on YouTube everywhere. It was insane. It went down way too quick. Like they blew it up and it dropped, but they didn't expect it to go as quickly as it did. And so it created a cloud of dust yeah, of that enveloped did. the city. Yeah, of course it did. No, they, they do this shit in like, in uh, whatever, in Las Vegas all the time. They'll destroy a building and it's not that big a deal. Like, there's some dust, but it's not. The, this thing went up like there was just so a dust cloud everywhere. It looked like a damn disaster movie because I'm standing, you know, maybe a block and a half away and I can see the building. And then all of a sudden this like cloud of dust and newspapers and all sorts of shit was just rolling down between the buildings at us. <laughs> oh, my God. And you're like, hey. I think it's going to stop. I think it's going to stop. Oh, shit. It's not stopping. Ah, run for yeah, your life. Yeah, it was exactly. And we're like covering our face and we're coughing and we're just inhaling <laughs> like concrete dust. 
and it was crazy and then we walked back over to where i parked and i had a black uh truck at the time and when i got there it was white and i couldn't believe how far the dust had gotten are you sure it was your truck michael did you just steal somebody's newer <laughs> better truck and I, you... <laughs> I stole a white bronco and just drove away <laughs> and then drove away like oj <laughs> yep <laughs> but no By i get way, there and right, it was like right, covered video. in dust it was it was crazy and then uh we went in and we went to a restaurant washed our faces had breakfast and went home and slept for the rest of the day yeah D dreaming of exploding buildings <laughs> <laughs> well it what? was it was amazing and it's one of the stories that like when i die they say that you you have flashes of all the things in your life i really hope that one comes back real vivid i want to see that again in like 4k <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that's weird so <laughs> so the sun ranto show is brought to you by our super duper ranchers blake beards tickets rogue wave creative and mike waller in the cubs ps plus podcast and also our patreon prize sponsors matt cammer's permanent paintings whose artwork hangs upon our walls and also by the way I just got this oh, uh, yesterday. Schwarber, yeah, this is the Whoa. the legend. I have cheese back. I have cheese. Yeah. What's going on? Hi. I well, I was just trying to listen, but uh, I'm on my way up the stairs because they opened up the top. So let's take a look. Uh, oh, oh, oh! I can feel a spot right here. Oh, give her look the big screen there, Danny. Oh yeah, let me look at our guy. Anyway, hold on, Danny. Still, hold on, Danny's yeah, going to move I'm, you to the big screen, but I'm I'm going to try to anyway. I think I got to first move her here and then move her here. All right, there we go. Okay, <laughs> now show us the field and show us show us our our handsome youngsters out there. Oh, that looks Look great. Look at our boy. Right this field sucks. Right field sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful. So, so not a lot of people should. How many people does that uh, hold? Uh, about 50,000. Yeah, it this looks is a huge. huge ballpark. Um, so yeah, this is, they've just opened up the inside. So it's going to be a while before you see the place fill up because everybody is downstairs uh, drinking. And the one thing I really love is if you can see it, I don't know if the, the lighting is going to let you, but there is a porch down there in the pen. There we go. You see all those people down there? Yeah, I do. Like yeah. right around here? Yep. They can, you can. They, that's one of the first places they let you in for like happy hour, half price beer time. And you stand out there on the porch and shag fly balls. So that's a good place to catch a batting practice singer around here. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it really so, looks, it really looks beautiful. And it sounds like so much more fan friendly than Wrigley is where they just gouge you on everything. And you know, it's, you, you feel honestly like you're at the airport when you're at Wrigley Field buying things. <laughs> you know, you're trapped in there. They have well, no choices. For I would say the, yes, the price and all that stuff. Wrigley is, uh, it, it's hurting for some, uh, for the stuff that you can get. But it's nice. I, I honestly, I love Wrigley. I'm I have saying. rarely been to, I have rarely been anywhere that treats you as nicely as the people who work at Wrigley. Ooh, Ryan you. Sandberg's there. Good to see he's up and about. Um, oh my God. Who's that? Oh my God. It's Darwin Barney. <laughs> <laughs> Darwin Barney in a wig. Amazing. <laughs> you know, that's, you, I, that's see, a I see a Christopher Morell Wrigleyville. There you go. Oh. Is it, so this it is seems so like fun. there's a lot of Cubs fans there. I mean, and you wonder about Seattle. I, I had a friend that was from Seattle that was a big Cubs fan. I met him in New York. He's an opera singer. Mm -hmm. But it's but I, I, I wondered, like, because a lot of times it's WGM because they didn't have a baseball team. But up in Seattle, right. they had a baseball team. They still end up Cubs fans. There's actually a, there's a cub bar, I think, over in, I'm not sure if it's West Seattle or over in Shoreline or something. I haven't been there yet, but I hear tell that it exists. Um, one thing that I like about this park that, uh, that you don't get is basically other than like the, the rich people deck where like all the tickets are eight bajillion dollars, um, you can walk around the entire park. There's nowhere that you can't go. So, you know, like like how Wrigley, you can only get into the bleachers if you have a bleacher ticket. Um, you can walk a full circuit around this ballpark 
uh, go and eat anywhere and shop at any of the shops and anything with like any ticket at all. The other thing that it seems like is as you walk around the park that you can still see what's going on in the game. And a lot of ballparks that you can walk around, you can't see what's going on. I'm looking at you, Milwaukee. You know, yeah. it, you're just like feel yeah. like you're in the and you feel like you're in the back in, of the mall where the security guard takes you when you get caught shoplifting. <laughs> it's really what you feel like. Oh, Mark Pryor at the game. Good to see him uh, up and about. It looks beautiful. <laughs> it it, it kind of reminds me. I mean, just from what I'm seeing, it reminds me of mm-hmm. Progressive Field. I don't think it's called Progressive. Is it still called Progressive Field? I forget. Where are the where are the Cleveland uh, Guardians play. Anyway, yeah, it kind of reminds me of that. It looks beautiful. I'm, it's I'm so massively beautiful. jealous. I wish I was going to a baseball game with you tonight and uh, everybody else you're going to meet up with. But it, it looks like a real nice open park. And it doesn't – are you telling me that it has a dome? Uh, there is a roof. So let's see. Yeah, uh, it's retractable. That is yeah, wild. Yeah, so I'm because actually it's standing so- right under the retractable bit. And so it can close. They can close it halfway. They can close it the whole way. Uh, they have this sign right here that they shoot fireworks out of sometimes. That's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, this is a gorgeous ballpark. It's absolutely no notes. Like, I wouldn't change a thing about it. Um, yeah. I like even, like, she doesn't even have a bad angle. You can be up there in the upper deck, uh, up in the nosebleed seats, and you can see the space needle. Uh, you can see the water. It's gorgeous from every angle. Ah, uh, just getting more and more jealous by the second, to be honest. And yeah, it, they really did it on right. Apple. And I was just going to say, tonight's game's on Apple TV, so half the freaking Cup mm-hmm. fans can't even freaking watch it. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, so, well, awesome. That man, it's it's so beautiful. Uh, I guess uh, here, well, I'll I'll put us back in uh, so we can say goodbye. Yeah. Um. Well, anytime you want to come on at, in like 10 more minutes, I guess. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> when, when, when you see another hilarious jersey, come on and pop back in. Um, all right. So, uh, all right. We'll, ta- we'll talk to you soon. Uh, T-Mobile correspondent, infield fly girl. Checking in, <laughs> checking in from Seattle, Washington. That's awesome. Oh, wait. She was saying <laughs> something. So, sorry, I cut you off. I, I just said Spagat. Oh, good. Go, go. <laughs> All right. Um, Chris Salato in here. Free two-month free trial code is out there for Apple TV. Wife used it earlier, and we're in. Yeah, I um, recently... Look, uh, bo- just use crack streams. Yeah, there's there's other <laughs> ways, too. Um, so, uh, what did I want to say? Oh, yeah, we should talk a little bit. We're already up against our first break. So, I think we should maybe just take it. Yeah, let's take our break and then we'll come back and we will talk about how well the Cubs played against the Dodgers. Yeah. Let's just focus on that. And we'll focus on that and we won't talk about anything else that happened after that. (laughs) But um, but yeah, this show, as I said, is brought to you by our Patreon supporters. So we should uh, uh, play a little commercial for that. But why don't you do a little who's who's that? Cubby! All right. I have a new one for today, and I think it's a... Ooh, wait, where'd it go? It's. I see it. You want me to put it up? Yeah, put it up, because I lost it. Okay. I think uh, this is a pretty iconic little shot right here of our silhouetted Sunranto silhouette of a Cubby. I think people are going to get this, but... Uh, Give it a shot. Batting right-handed. Looks like a more modern picture, judging by the people in the background and, like, the quality of the picture and the American Airlines sign. That wasn't always there. So, And the massive uh, face guard that you can sort of see. Oh, yeah, the- yeah, yeah. That's right. Oh, I just thought it was his giant nose. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a Muppet. <laughs> So, um, all right, cool. Well, we're going to take a quick commercial break. Um, Patreon.com slash Sunranto is how you join us and how you join us on Discord. And uh, it's where it's where friendships are happening. So uh, we'll be right back. 
All over Chicagoland, there are thirsty, frazzled, overworked Cubs podcasters who are struggling to survive one more baseball season in the dog-eat-dog world of unpaid content creation. But it doesn't have to be this way. You can make a difference. Become a super ranter at patreon.com slash sunranto, where your support ensures that poor, sad, pathetic, ugly, loser Cubs podcasters can pay for tickets and beer, and in turn, line the pockets of the baseball agarch Ricketts family. Just one dollar a month can buy a scorecard. Five dollars a month can pay for guitar strings to write a Cubs song. And ten dollars a month almost buys one beer at Wrigley Field. Cubs content creators are the lowest pieces of pond scum garbage that slither over the face of this planet. But super ranters help them get drunk and screw off at baseball games. What do you get out of it? The Sun Ranto Show, delivered to your podcatcher without stupid advertisements like the one you're seeing and hearing right now. Plus, at other Super Rancher levels, you can get Cubs music, access to private Sun Ranto pages, the Ranter calendar, and special thanks and Ranter recognition in our live broadcasts, plus eligibility for monthly prizes. What does Sun Ranto get out of it? Your money. For tickets and beer. Go to patreon.com slash sunranto, that's patreon.com slash sunranto, and become a super ranter today. Who's that cubby? We got a couple of guesses in the chat here. Yeah, we had a Wisdom, a KB, and a Baez. I still can't find these pictures for some reason in the brand so mm, you're gonna have weird. to uh well it. i this is my favorite guess of them all which is chris salato guesses oj simpson <laughs> no, uh, that is you know what correct. i i would have said that that would have been a good uh guess if he was laying on his back uh yeah i, I did like the drudge report headline which was cancer cancer murders oj <laughs> yeah oh I was looking for this uh, one for my TFC tonight, but I couldn't find it. I had seen it earlier, and it said, uh, OJ can finally rest now that he knows his wife's murderer is gone. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, oh, God damn. <laughs> so we've got a couple more guesses out here. Javi Baez, uh, Coughlin, Chris Coughlin, um, Dexter Fowler. Hap, yeah. batting righty. Hap's the closest we've gotten so far. Terrio. It all is. Can, all wrong. All wrong. Show them who it is, Danny. It is. Seiya. Seiya. Seiya Suzuki. Yep. And that little leg lift right there is kind of his home run. Like, when he's just reaching out, like, he he has a, a little bit of two swings, right? If he's just trying to control the ball and just get it into play, uh, he does that leg lift is not nearly as pronounced, but when he really goes for it, the leg comes up and he crushes. So we got to talk about this week of baseball. I mean, we, it could have gone better. I was really excited that the Cubs won two or three from the Dodgers. It got off to a great start winning that nine to seven contest. Um, it, it felt, it felt like we could have won the second game. We got a little hosed by the umpire. Couldn't score. Uh, Yamamoto was on the ropes. It, it, I, I thought that we were going to be able to, you know, break the game open early, score a bunch of runs like we have been doing. And then Yamamoto struck out the side with the bases loaded and it got, he, he ran out of a couple jams, uh, you know, good pitch. Yeah. Knew that, you know, what can you do? Game three, they freaking take it. They win big. Then you go to San Diego. Right, well, we won't talk about it. Well, let, let's hold on. Let's just talk about the Dodger, Dodger series first, yeah. here for a little <laughs> you bit. Happy. You're happy with it. it. Yeah. It was the, the Michael Bush revenge tour. Like he hit home runs. He, hit, uh, he, the end of that game, that looked like a possible double into right field that he dove and, and caught. Uh, was that game game one, game two? I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Well, 
remember which the, one it was, but that was a hell of a catch. Yeah, and, and and in general, like the he's hitting, the Cubs are hitting. They got a top five offense right now as far as OPS goes in the major leagues, and they, you know, and it's fine if one game you score the one run, but. What's frustrating, and I I got to get to the Padres thing. No, I won't do it yet. I won't do it yet. Yeah, we'll yeah. Let's in. let's Padres let's enjoy. Will, time ago, yeah, we'll enjoy it. Yeah, we'll enjoy it for one moment. <laughs> yeah, because honestly, look, the the Cubs have had obviously they had the Rockies that they swept, which was great. Uh, they lost a freaking heartbreaker to the Rangers and ended up, you know, losing two of three On opening but, day. But those are the world champions, right? World. And uh, then, you know, then they get the Dodgers and they come back and they keep it rolling. I mean, they were on a five-game win streak after that first win against the Dodgers. That was, like, that's a nice little run early in the season and against some stiff competition. It was great to take two of three from them. Yeah, well, and, uh, you know, if you look at the overall April schedule, it's tough, you know, you're playing really good teams right out of the bat, except for the Rockies. And so when you if you can figure that you could end up like even 500 at the end of April, you would kind of take it. And sometimes it's like a meandering path and you lose some games that you think you're going to win and you and vice versa. And that kind of evens out over the year. At the beginning of the year, there's a huge microscope on it. They're also playing in different kinds of weather. I mean, it's been nice. It was nice in San Diego, but <laughs> it was of terrible. Weather, Wrigley. If you're if you're the Dodgers, you're still complaining about the weather. Yeah, it's terrible I, at Wrigley. Nice in San Diego, so you're go, bo- going back and forth. Yeah, Dodgers were so pissed about that, and you know, frankly, we both had to play in those conditions. But the Dodgers, you know, they just didn't do well in those conditions. No, and it's a, I mean, it's a cop-out. Like you said, both teams have to play in it. Uh, it it sucks for everyone. Be, and it's not like the Dodgers can claim that the Cubs, you know, did something, you know, like, oh, they're, it, it's not like in football, right? Where you have like a dome team against the Bears and they're playing in like, you know, 30 degree weather and yeah. the dome team can't deal with it because they're not used to cold temperatures like that. That's not how baseball works. They were all just in Arizona. It's cold and crappy yeah. for everyone. And it was wet. Like, it was really wet. That game, a couple of those games, was insane that they were still playing. It was coming down so hard. Yeah, I like what Terry says in the chat here. He says, Shohei was mad because he had the under on 50 bags of diamond <laughs> dry on Sunday. <laughs> That's a good one. That's great. Um, uh, well, and the real conversation to be had is not whether that inning should have been played or the game should be stopped. The real question to be had is should they be playing baseball games in April in Chicago? And the answer is a decided no. They shouldn't be playing baseball games until about this week. Yeah. yeah. So, it, I love your idea. Two opening days, one of the South and the West and the other of the East and the Midwest and one and you have a 10 day road trip to start the season where you play all your games in those uh, warm weather dome places and then you move it on over and by April 12th you start this weekend you'd be opening up in the midwest it makes all the yeah. sense in the world if you look at old opening days back even in the 80s the cubs weren't starting until right about now yeah right? oh i mean opening day was like february or february Good God. Uh, the opening day was like April 3rd or 4th or 5th. And then you wouldn't get to Wrigley until another week, what, another week. So. Yeah. It, it makes more sense. And that's because humans are doing it. No, I listened to B B BCB. No CC cup of cubby blue. Yeah. God. Me and Sarah's I, show too many, too many B's and C's, yeah. but yeah, cup of cubby blue. Uh, I was really actually touched a little bit, Danny. You called me out and you said the whole two opening days thing because I honestly think that you don't listen to me ever. <laughs> no, so I, when I heard it, I was like, oh, my God, he heard one thing I said. 
No, I, I don't agree with you ever, <laughs> except for about this one thing. That's the, this is the one thing. The, so, yeah. the other thing in my grand scheme of like how they should be running these schedules, three game series, every Monday is a day off. And if you did that, then you would have time to play these teams when you get rained out and you wouldn't have to push some of these games against the Dodgers who are never coming back to Wrigley. So if they don't get that done, then they have to figure out a day in which both of these teams have a day off, yeah, which well, could be in September. Yeah, instead of always or like, well, we always have Mondays. I know because, look, we're off like two Thursdays and then a random Monday and then they play 12 games in a row and then they're off. Like they even have like some random Sunday off at some point, you know, in this season. It's just the dumbest thing you ever do. And then we start the season in Texas in a dome and they had the next day off, off for no reason and well, that's like supposed to be a rain delay day and i mean i maybe we can get into this in the in the last part but like yeah. to me too it's like i don't even like playing all the teams like that is already making me mad only that we don't play our division rivals enough so i feel like we don't get that interdivisional rivalry all ramped up like it's a shame that there's not another series in Milwaukee to go to. It's a shame that there's not another series in Cincinnati. These are all drivable places. Even Pittsburgh is a, a day's drive. You can get yeah. to, you know, St. Louis is four or five hours away, depending on how fast you drive or where you live. But, like, you know, these are all places that Cup fans would show up, and it's just a shame that you you have one less series to do it. And, and, and now we're in Seattle and instead of it being special, they'll be back there in another couple of years, you know? It's yeah. And at the very least, if they're going to keep it like this, don't, don't have every series against Milwaukee done by July 4th or well, whatever the, they're doing. The Mets broadcasters were bitching about it because they're not going to see the Braves again a, until like September at City Field. Like, yeah. I guess, or, or, or vice versa. Like they're not going back to Atlanta again until September. And they're like, so we're playing them in Atlanta in April and September, whatever it was, I, I might be getting the teams and the dates wrong and everything, but it was the Mets broadcasters that were mad about it. So it was at least the Mets. I got that much right. It was, it right. was probably, <laughs> and it was probably Keith Hernandez, but it could have been Ron Darling or the other guy. Um, I don't or, know. The other, or the other guy, or the whoever other the guy, guy is, the ghost of Gary Carter. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I hate the new unbalanced schedule. Actually, it's balanced, so they say, but it's my brain, it's unbalanced because it doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah, no, it, I mean, this is just, it's death, taxes, and bitching about the fucking MLB schedule. Yeah. This is what it is anymore. Well, and also to just start the season with the West Coast road trip is weird. We you we should be starting against our interdivisional rivals to see how we match up right away and that was always the cool thing about the interdivisional rivals is you played them in april then you played mm -hmm. them and then you're one team then you're playing them again in june or july and you're another team then you get them again in september and you get to see the progress of a team which is a, a moving breathing thing over the course of the year so like your bullpen might be totally different by september then it was in April, but now we don't get to match all that stuff up divisionally. You have to do it against 29 other teams, which frankly is a lot of teams to keep track of <laughs> because yeah. I'm looking at the freaking Mariners roster. I'm like, not only do I not know these guys, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Yeah. Who who cares? And <laughs> we see one, one of the time. big one of the big draws of playing an American League team used to be the change in the rules. Because you would be playing in Seattle. Oh, who are we going to put at DH? What are we going to do there? How are we going to do it? And then if Seattle plays at Wrigley, it's like, oh, what? what's it going to look like when one of their pitchers has to go up there and try and swing a bat? Like, that was just interesting. Yeah. And now we don't even have that. It's just nobody even, gives a shit. Nobody gives a shit. Uh, yeah, and I like what Alexander Miller says here in the chat on YouTube. Thanks for tuning in, Alexander. I wouldn't mind if the balanced schedule was like every four or five years, but I hate it uh, a year in. Um, yeah, that kind of would be interesting. Just you just do it a little bit different. Like, hey, it's the fifth year. 
you know, one year's the world baseball classic, another year's the balance schedule. You play everybody and it's just rotate because those different things are talkers. Give us something interesting. Yeah, absolutely. So, and, and just, it's weird because the West coast road trip that used to be in June or something like that. And you'd leave for 10 days and you do all the teams, you do the Padres, the giants and the Dodgers all in one fell swoop at, at like once or twice a year, you'd go out and do it. Yeah. Cause you just played the national league. That was kind of interesting too. It, you know, the fact that it was this just you against the national league. And the only time you saw the AL really at all was in the world series. And there was really something AL versus NL. And there was bragging rights. Now it doesn't matter what league you're in or division for that matter. Wait till they start doing seeding. And we oh, get like yeah. a bracket style round robin tournament world series or something. Oh, we uh, yeah, we we we're <laughs> already into the postseason tournament era. And I mean, you, you this may surprise you at this point knowing how curmudgeonly I generally am, but at this point like if you're going to go this direction, you just need to change. You just need to get rid of the fact that there's two different leagues. You need to go to an East and a West or something like that. You just need to rearrange absolutely everything. And you put the White Sox and the Cubs in the same division because it doesn't fucking matter anymore. You know, like there used to be a reason they were separated, uh, but there's not anymore. So just put them in the same division. Yeah, rearrange three. all of this stuff. So, And I don't know how, how you do it exactly, but... Do it more regionally or and, something like that. Yeah, and we're maybe a little bit too early to start talking about postseason stuff. I mean, it is only April, but like just the fact that there are three wild cards mean that a stacked division could take all the wild cards. And it's just like, what meaning does divisions have if three random teams are getting in that have nothing to do with divisions? It's literally half the team. Yeah, Alexander Miller says it doesn't help that we have 15 teams in each league instead of an even number. I agree 100%, and I think the way you fix that is you just cut the teams out of – you You cut both the Florida teams. Yeah. There's no reason for Florida to have teams. They don't go to the games. They don't care. They all suck. Nobody <laughs> gives a shit about the fucking Rays. The Rays – they're good or and like, nobody cares. They're but, contenders all the time. Nobody gives nobody a shit. Nobody gives a shit. It's, it's the only ones that care about the Rays are like Jed Hoyer, who wants to be like the fucking Rays and not spend any money and be good. And, you know, and the Marlins are whatever they are. I don't even know what the Marlins are anymore. But, yeah, just get rid of them and go down to 28 teams total and then realign the whole damn thing. So, like I said, this may bring some shock to people because I'm usually the guy's like, don't change this. Don't change that. Don't do this. But if you're going to do it, don't do it half ass. Just don't do shit. Half ass fucking go for it. If you're going to change the league, change the rules, make it all the same. Don't fuck around and do like half of it. It's just really go for it and change everything up all together. And one league just go and then and then at the end because we're already in the postseason tournament i think you have a regular season champion like they do in soccer and then they have a postseason tournament and then that you can have a, a postseason tournament champion and they could switch and they could take players from the teams that didn't make it and things like <laughs> you that you can do all sorts you of fucking sorts crazy of shit. shit yeah yeah all of a sudden you're like taking the best guy on the A's. you know you have an extra postseason draft i mean it's kind of like they do in the dominican league in the winter they take uh they take players from the teams that aren't and don't end up making the playoffs they get to draft a few of those guys and drop some of their bad players yeah. So, okay. Um, well, let's move so on. I guess we got to talk about the Padres here for a minute, yeah, right? Well, we, well, yeah, we got to talk about the Padres. Last thing about the Dodgers is, and I was really impressed with Imanaga, who's pitching tomorrow against that amazing lineup. He didn't do nine strikeouts, but he pitched great. And he would Thank goats he, for Shota. And, yeah, but it wouldn't. But the only thing that sucked about it was he was fucking cruising and then the weather. So, getting back to that weather conversation we were having, how they shouldn't play. That screwed up showed his outing. You know, he would have gone maybe six and he only had 40 some odd pitches. 
you know, and the bullpen needed the help instead, you know, that's, they had to play in that weather. And this is the transition. They had to play in that weather, which allowed, which mean the bullpen had to pitch all day on Sunday because Shota, who was cruising, couldn't go uh, past the rain delay. Then the next night, when you needed the bullpen, the bullpen imploded and the Cubs' worst freaking uh, comeback loss from the other team uh, yeah. happened in t- over 20 freaking years. Uh, here's what <laughs> happened. Uh, Jesse Rogers tweeted this out. The Cubs had won 234 consecutive games when leading by eight or more runs. The last loss was in 2002. Here's the thing, though. I'm a little frustrated that that is a 21st century date. <laughs> because let, let's be real here. If you're winning by eight or more runs, you win the game. It shouldn't be, oh, this has happened before. That should have been the first goddamn time that we've ever seen it. In 150 years of Cubs baseball, we should have never seen that before. And I'm like a little surprised that eight runs, not only was it not good enough this week, there were other times that it wasn't good enough. And the Brewers last year or the year before, remember they did it to us twice with the seven (laughs) runs, uh, like the Cubs. Remember the Cubs were up like seven to nothing after the first or something. And then by the end of the first, it was eight to seven. I think it was oh, like the Arietta start yeah, when, Arietta. when they were up six, nothing. And so just eight, blew it. eight is an first arbitrary two. number. Cause seven seems like, yeah, you should win that freaking game too. Now it's one thing if it's the first and you give them all the time in the world to come back. I don't know what the deal with that 2002 game was, you yeah. know, maybe it was the third inning. They put up a bunch of runs in the end and the team came back and won. Yeah, you know, on a day where it's blowing out of Wrigley, the final score is you know twenty-two to twenty-one or something like that. I don't know what that game was, but this game, it was later in the game. Assad cruising didn't give up any runs. Then, you know, you could say maybe Assad should have been out there, but it was towards his hundred pitches when they, they had to take him out. So it made sense. It was the well, no, the he, six. It, they put him out there for the sixth, and they shouldn't have done it. Yeah, they they absolutely course. should not have done that. But and and I talked about this in Cub Spot. By the way, if you are a Patreon supporter, if you give us money, you don't only get this show, you get a lot more cuz we do recaps of all these games and we have three different people do it. You get three different perspectives. It's actually really nice now that Mike Waller is jumping in there. Uh I listen to everyone that I'm not in. And I think a lot of people do that everyone that I'm not in, but you know, it's good. It's fun to go through these games and look And the thing that I mentioned in my cup spot about this game. This tells us a lot about what Craig council is seeing and what he understands about this bullpen. Javier Assad on his second or third start of the year, a young pitcher who pitchers don't go over a hundred. They just don't anymore. That's a rarity. He's rolling up, you know, close to 100. You know he's going 100 if he can get through the six. He sent Assad back out there because he knows what's in that bullpen, right? He's like, well, I could have a six-inning Assad who, whose arm might just fall off, or I could go with anyone from our bullpen. We've got 13 pitchers to choose from. I don't know. We're going to sod. That frightens me. I mean, that honestly, of all the things you can say about the bullpen, and you can say a lot of bad things about this bullpen so far, the biggest thing that makes me think that there are issues is the fact that Craig Council is like, let's go ahead and put a sod out there for another inning. And then there wasn't even a quick hook. He walked the first guy, and then he had, he's at 97 pitches, and he's like, give him another guy. <laughs> that one went out of the yard, and it didn't go out of the yard a little bit. It went out of the yard a lot. Yeah. It was bad. Yeah, it, it was bad, and they couldn't stop the bleeding at all, and they just kept nickel and diamond. And at, at, how many runs did they score in that six? Oh, yeah, then Kuas came in. 
and Kuos gave up every, like he was just throwing batting practice. It was insane how badly they were beating him. Finally, I, if I'm remembering this right, I don't have it up in front of me. I think Hector Neris came in and got the final out yeah. in order to get out of that inning. But yeah, it was, they it was just brutal. couldn't stop the bleeding. Yeah. No. And uh, man, I, my, my family was at that game. I see that, uh, fan of fan of small ball 2024 was at that game. He says, try being at that shit show live eight to nothing. <laughs> it was not a good night for me. I was oh my getting, God. That I, would I was, be horrible. I was getting texts all night from my family too. And they're, <laughs> They're they're having such fun. They're like, oh, this is a great game. We're having such a good time here. And then uh I I I was at rehearsal that night and I just oh ain't nothing. Oh, it looks like we're gonna win this one. And then the show happened and I riding my bike home uh from rehearsal at the end of the night, listening to the whole thing just get implode on the team. <laughs> uh, feeling bad. I was like uh, te- I stop at a red light. I text them. I'm like, dude, you got to do something. You got to stop this from happening. And it was yeah. just like a slow motion train wreck. It probably, you know, reminds me of the uh, implosion of the kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, that happened very quickly. And this was just a slow, this is horrendous. This was like uh climate change. Well, here's <laughs> just the- came in and came in. And, and every time we thought we might get out of this. You know, like we're like, we still got one run to work with. <laughs> yeah, just, no, no, we didn't have that run uh, to work with anymore. But then uh, the the other slow motion train wreck is Kyle Hendricks because that's oh. the other loss. And you know, I know a lot of the ranters are talking in the Discord, uh, but and including me. And by the the ranters, I mean me and <laughs> whoever else feels like talking about Kyle Hendricks being toast. You know, yeah. I mean, d- dude, he's the first inning he got nickeled and dimed, but they're making contact. A contact kind of team can like bloop the bloop it in there, bloop it in there, but they're not missing the ball. They got it not necessarily timed, but they're working on it because by the freaking second time through the order, they're hitting it pretty good and he's giving up more runs. And then by the third time through the order, they're slamming the ball out of the park and uh, they've got him perfectly timed and. I don't know, dude, like I was feeling pretty good about Kyle Hendricks as our like number four or five kind of dude, you know, that kind of towards the end of his career, kind of riding off into the sunset. But as, and even though like the numbers of like number one, number two are kind of meaningless, you just need innings pitched. You know, the fact that we're depending on him to pitch in games that are it, big games, you know, to be especially like a, right now with, Steel and Tyone. Tyone, yeah. yeah. It, it just looks bad because he's like, okay, well, you're our only hope, dude. Otherwise, you know, and that's what was sad about the also the uh, Javier Assad start because he does he did great. You're up against you Darvish. You get to you Darvish. You do well off of him. You score runs off of him. So this this is a game you didn't necessarily think you were going to win on paper, and you you had it in your hands. The Hendricks game, I mean, who did we beat? We beat Musgrove, right? That's who we beat. Yeah. And that's yeah, a which, surprise. So we did well. That was Ben, the- that was ben Brown. Five-finger five, five, finger five Ben finger. Brown. Oh, yeah. Look at I got my uh, I got my three-finger Brown shirt from In the Clutch on. The Brown's twirling hand. You can pick that up at intheclutch.com slash sunranto. Very nice right here. So my son's birthday was on Tuesday. And look at that. I oh, got dude. him a take a chance shirt, and that's me standing there with my five finger brown shirt. Yeah. Well, oh, that's a three finger brown shirt. Or yeah, that's a three finger brown. <laughs> that's a shocker. Yeah. I got it wrong. Uh <laughs> but yeah. By the way, those are both available in the clutch. And that's I mean, if you're wondering what does that take a chance shirt look like on an, a kid or on a person, like this is great, right? Yeah, it is it. Does he like the shirt? Yes, like it fits with him well, and it's like uh, and he, yeah, and, and does he have any reviews? He's a he's a thin guy, of course, and no, I gave it to him that morning, and he he went right in and threw it on, and you know, wore it. And he's not even like a huge baseball fan. My older son is way more into baseball. He's not as much, but no, he dug the shirt, 
and uh, it's just like a fun shirt. So yeah. So we but, uh, should, sorry. We should, so we got off. Let's talk about Ben Brown and then we'll go to break. Yeah. Well, yeah. Ben Brown, we could talk about him. Uh, I mean, we'll talk about having to do a bunch of heavy lifting as a kid. He's doing great. You know, they didn't, he started that game, right? It wasn't an opener situation like before. We thought it might be right. Okay. Like we thought it might be a, an opener situation because we didn't really know who was coming in. Then we heard it was Ben Brown, but then I'm like, okay, they might throw him like three innings, but what did he get? He got like five innings in this or no, he didn't get five innings. He got four and like two thirds. And then they broke away from him. Cause I remember uh shit Bambi and JD talking about it, how in the past, a manager might like actually push it a little longer to see if he can get the kid a win. But in today's climate, they don't do that. They just move on and go to the pen, even, you know, when there's only one out left to get. Yeah, well, and it's tough because sometimes you don't do that with the Javier Assad. You do, yeah. You know, you push it because your bullpen's freaking toast. And our bullpen really is. To, I'm glad we had yesterday off. That's going to help tonight, I think. Um, And we did get a fresh arm because... Uh, I mean, you call him Kuas, which I like that you say that, but I think it's just Kwas. <laughs> yeah, it's Kwas. But it's, I like the way, Kuas, the way that though, I pronounce his with... name is questionable. <laughs> it, it is questionable. <laughs> um, well, Keegan Thompson is up, and we haven't seen him in a while. I'm going to put his stats up real quick. Um, he at Iowa this year so far I had a 450 ERA, but that's only in six innings pitched. Gave up a few three runs. He was walking dudes. He was striking out dudes like, you know, whatever. It's early. And uh, last year, he had a cup of coffee back with the team. It didn't go great. He had a 471. He didn't have a good year in Iowa either. He had a freaking 471. Uh, wait, am I looking? Uh, wait, 810? Am I seeing that correctly? Yeah, he struggled oh, a lot man. last 810. year. 810. I didn't realize it was that, but he actually did better in Chicago. And and he didn't do well in Chicago, but in in Chicago he was in a little bit worse situation. But I wish still. that was his strikeouts per nine, eight ten. I know, right? Instead, it's his ERA. That's terrible. Yeah, Keegan Thompson is a frustrating story so far in his career. We were all very excited for him to come up. He came up. He's I think he's gotten a couple of starts and he's done some stuff out of the bullpen, and he just the it feels like. The stage so far has been too big for him. And I hope that he figures that out. Like, I don't know that it's necessarily a, you know, and, and Mike Waller would probably know more about this and better info. But watching the game, I don't think it's a, a mechanics issue or uh, any of that. I think it's a head issue. You know, it's just. Well, he, he was, was hurt. This, yeah, was he hurt too? Well, he yeah. got hurt a few years ago, and then it, oh, a few years ago, yeah, right? But you never know. Like sometimes it takes a while to to work back. Uh, Bill Sug is here in the comments saying, "What time did you start?" We started at seven central because I screwed up. So sorry to everybody that's tuned in at eight o'clock, wondering why we're already more than halfway through the show. It's because the game is at eight thirty, and I just wrote. I wrote you said it correctly in the Cubs pod. It's I just did. the most recent thing you messed up. Yeah, it was today. I'm tired. I was I was actually out till after three o'clock in the morning last night. I slept about four hours, and uh, I screwed up. What can I say? I'm sorry to everybody. I'm I'm, I'm never gonna <laughs> screw up again. I promise. <laughs> That'll never happen again. We swear to goats. Well, uh, they they need help. They got it. Keegan Thompson. Hopefully, he is help and not having an eight ten ERA. The other person I want to bring up real quick is just that, uh, and I think we could talk about this on a future show, but Alzali, two blown saves already this year, plus a, what would have been a blown save if Garrett Cooper didn't make that catch against the Dodgers on Friday because they had a couple runs on, and the dude smoked a ball, and I believe it was Garrett Cooper that caught it, was playing first base at the time. I don't know. I was at the game. I, I don't know who's playing I, first can't remember. I know Bush. Might have got, been Bush. It might have been Bush. Actually. Bush got that one. Like that was in the revenge game. Like he All was right. really 
so, so anyway, we him. almost he almost three blown saves for him. I hope he can put it together because really the bullpen's in trouble, and there is nobody else except for maybe Naris, but I don't know. Well, you know, I, don't know I was afraid. I was absolutely one hundred percent adamant that uh, you know Alzali is the guy. We're good. It's it's getting harder to defend that position now. I think he's blowing I, saves. What are you gonna do? I know. I I honestly I I love Alzali, and I think I oh God, it feels like he should do well. But so far this season, the the reality is it's not happening, and yeah. reality takes place takes precedence over anything else. Any anything that's like oh this probability that JD and Boog should not be talking about or uh, spin rates or this or that n- none of it matters. The reality matters, and right now, Alzali is not hitting the reality that I have in my head for him. Yeah, and I think it, not the potential that he's capable of too. Uh, so I, di- I did want to bring this up before we go to break here is that IFG infield flag girl who was with us earlier is at this baseball game. This is her Venmo QR code, scan it and give her five, 10 bucks for beer and nachos. You'll and- be giving, and you won't only be giving her beer and nachos. You'll be giving like, Ann. I think is it B side yeah, Ann is out yeah. there. So, Hanging you know, out. you and the, in the discord nobody said in yeah you'll be hooking her up too like it's it's a fun thing to do look you can't be there you can kind of live vicariously through the people who are there exact infield fly girl with no eye and girl that's what it that's what it looks like so uh we're gonna take uh, we're just gonna take a quick commercial break because it's 20 minutes till game time so we got to wrap everything up real quick but I am going to play a commercial for In The Clutch Shirts, and we'll be right back. If you like the Cubs a bunch, buy your T-shirts from In The Clutch. We've got all the best styles for you. Dansby, Saya, Morel, too. Clark Fly in his W. Cody Bellinger, smoking Dudes. Vintage shirts from days of old. Patrick Wisdom and Nico. You'll look sharp wearing your stroke. Temper set off with the code. S O N R A N T O. S O N R A N T O. In the clutch.com is your store for the most fun baseball shirts on the planet. Don't forget to use promo code SUNRANTO to knock a couple bucks off your purchase. Stack or die, we need more cups. Get it all at In The Clutch. Cause if you like the Cubs a bunch, buy t-shirts from In The Clutch. Get it all at In The Clutch. Get it all at In The Clutch. We are back. Oh, you got your Shy Fed shirt on tonight. Very nice. I do. I got my Shy Fed shirt and my... uh, my whale's hat. You're going old school tonight. Um, I, uh, I always forget to play this, but I'm going to play it real quick. This is Fergie Jenkins. You're listening to Sean Randall, the 69th Beth Cup podcast. Ah, oh, I love, Thanks, I love Fergie. Fergie. So, um, yeah, just real quick, we, we should probably talk just briefly, at least, about what's going on with Otani because it's wild, dude. The story's wild. Ipe stealing 16 million bucks from Otani. Imagine was, not noticing that. Having it, the kind of money where 16 million, you're just like, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's obscene. It turns out today, Ipe Muzahara surrendered to law enforcement this morning. He's in federal custody. I guess he made bond. Um, I wonder where he got the money. Um <laughs> <laughs> Hey, could you float me another couple of mail, uh, Shohei? Um, there was a story, and I'll put this up real quick, it, uh, that um, Bowyer, who is the illegal bookie, located Otani while he was walking his dog. Did you hear about this? And no. He, and he texted Ipe. He goes, hey, Ipe, it's 2 o'clock on Friday. I don't know why you're not returning my calls. I'm here in Newport Beach, and I see Otani walking his dog. 
just going to go up and talk to him and ask how I could get in touch with you since you're not responding. Please call me back immediately. And there was no overt threats. But then Boyer said again, you're putting me in a position where this is going to get out of control. I mean, if I don't hear from you by the end of the day today, it's going to be out of my hands. Mizuhara responded the same day stating, my bad, man. I just got back from Japan two days ago, and I'm leaving again tomorrow. I bet he is. I'll be back in mid-January. To be honest with you, I'm really struggling right now, and I need some time before I start to make payments. And the way he was making those payments was by going to and pretending he was Otani at the bank. Yeah, this is this is typical. <laughs> I'm Look, I'm a middle-aged white dude. Middle-aged white dudes run banks. And this is typical sort of middle-aged white dudes can't tell one Asian from another. Like, how do you not know that that's... Look at Ipe. He does not look like a professional fucking athlete. <laughs> well, and and well, it's Otani. Like, when Otani walks in and says, yeah, I'm Otani, well, and I need call. a bunch of money. There's you, a phone call. It was online. Even worse. It was a phone. <laughs> yeah, but it was it was a phone call. And here's the how he got access to everything It's because he's his freaking translator. And so mm-hmm. he had and I guess Otani did all of his uh, negotiations with his agent through this guy through Ipe. I mean, everything was done through Ipe. So Ipe was just trusted, completely trusted. And he took that trust and obviously uh, betrayed it. But um, check this out. Um, on March 20th, 2024, uh, Mizuhara messaged the bookmaker stating, have you, this is obviously recent. This is when the story broke. Um, have you seen the reports and book ma- the bookmaker said, yes, but that's all bullshit. Obviously you didn't steal from him. I understand it's a cover job. I totally get it. Mizuhara then responded to bookmaker one. Technically I did steal from him. It's all over from me for me. That seems like a pretty good confession right there, but I I still feel like when there's smoke, there's fire, and I kind of still feel like, how the hell does Otani not know? That- okay, I, I'm going to put on the, the tinfoil hat here a little bit and just say that might be the smartest thing that Ipe could have done, right? Because he's got a dude who probably isn't going to play by the rules to get his money. And when he says, no, man, I actually did steal that, which means he's going to go to jail. That sucks. But we all know white collar crime doesn't get like really bad stuff. And he's probably going to go to jail, but he's probably not going to jail for a ton of time. This dude needs to just get off of the street. That's what he's thinking. He's like, I'm going to, I'll, I'll go to jail. I'll be in jail. I'll be away from this bookie, which the bookie may have somebody in jail, but still, you know, that's smart. He's like, no, I can't pay you because I was stealing from him. And now obviously I can't, I'm, I'm putting up a, a point for Ipe on that one. You fucking tell him, Hey, I did it, man. Yeah. And you get the fuck off the street. And then if you're lucky, they send you back to Japan to serve your time there. The thing that you got to ask yourself, the question, though, it's like the bookie, how he knows that the money is coming from Otani because interpreters don't get paid that much. Right. They just don't have that kind of money. And I mean, so and the fact that the interpreters or the, the bookie said, oh, I know it's a cover job. What he's saying is like, I know you're covering for Otani Mm -hmm. to me. So, I mean, that makes the, it seem like Otani's guilty. Or it's a cover. Yeah. I don't know. I, I see it from the idea that yes, Otani does know, but he's like, I know you asked him for the money. (laughs) Like, I know you don't have that much money. I know Otani is bankrolling you because you don't have that kind of money. There could be something more devious in there, more more deep. Like, I know that you're both making these bets together yeah. type of a thing. But 
Yeah, but Ipe. I have trouble thinking that Otani didn't know anything, and and I'll tell you and I'll tell you why because Sun Ranto, there was a private press conference, and we were lucky enough to be able to be in attendance, and so this <laughs> is going to be a Sun Ranto exclusive that I'm about to play. It is our attendance at the Otani press conference. This is the first that is played anywhere. Um, the the translators, uh, you know, would like to thank them for their hard work. They got this job done really fast to translate this Japanese for us because we don't speak it. So uh, we'll be right back after we play this press conference from Otani, world premiere exclusive. Well, I'll bet you've all read my ex-interpreter's confession that he stole millions from me to gamble. In fact, I've got a thousand bucks right now that you've all read the indictment against him. Now, I know you're wondering, what are the odds I wouldn't notice the missing $16 million or clue in that my interpreter was always on my phone talking to a guy named Fat Tony or that I didn't think anything of it when he asked for my online bank password and my mother's maiden name. I guess sometimes it's a roll of the dice when you trust your friends. But I plan to parlay this into a learning experience. Finally, he confessed and is obviously guilty. So thank you for not investigating this matter any further as I deal with the bad hand I've just been dealt. I mean, he's just using gambling euphemism after gambling euphemism. The guy is obviously a degenerate. Right. He, he can't even think without, he can't speak, he can't do anything without, like, just gambling oozing out of his pores yeah he, he can't stop thinking about it it's incredible so but it's a little disconcerting that something like that would be this close to the game so speaking about being this close to the game i do want to we have to talk about tonight's game starting in 10 minutes but first i want to congratulate carrie meyer who won the sun ranto ranters lost boys bracket we raised three hundred dollars Four Lost Boys. So great job, everybody. And um, I saw that Chris Salato, whose birthday is coming up in just a few short weeks, he started a Facebook donation drive for his birthday. And what I'm going to do is use our uh, quarterly tithe to Lost Boys, add that on top of uh, the 300 bucks that we're going to pay Lost Boys through the, the um, uh, bracket challenge. And that's all going to go on top of Chris Salato's birthday Lost Boys donation drive. So I'm dropping the link to that in the chat right now. If you'd like to uh, log on to that, I don't know if uh, you're friends with Chris on Facebook, but he's doing a donation drive. All that money through Facebook goes straight to the Lost Boys. Levante says, and Le Levante, for you, those who don't know, is the leader of Lost Boys. He is the guy uh, that runs the entire program. Works with the kids down there on the south side. Uh, teaches them baseball, life skills. He's an awesome dude. We're raising money for him, if you don't know. But um, uh, we give them money all the time. That We support them pretty much And for regularly. anybody in the Discord, we are going to post this link in uh, the Discord as well. It's over its uh, charitable causes. And most of the Discord is only for Patreon. But we do have the shank list and the charitable causes is also there for people, anybody to get in. So get on Discord, jump in there. You can at least hang out with us uh, during the, sh the shank list. That's our game thread where we talk trash about everything happening. And there's charitable causes there and you can get the link. Perfect. So tonight's game, we got Wix, the lefty. He's going up against uh, Miller, Bryce Miller, who uh, we're facing actually a couple of pretty young pitchers. Bryce Miller being one of them. He's only, what, 25 years old. He's only been in the league a little bit of time. Um, this year he's been in, uh, let's see, two only two games, 12 innings pitched, giving up four runs, a couple of homers, got 13 strikeouts against only three walks in those 12 innings. Um yeah, young dude. Cubs haven't really faced him. And then uh, only I think Garrett Cooper has it at bat. And that's it. And then uh, Jordan Wicks, they haven't faced him either. Um, I think Mitch Hanniger has faced him. And that's the only Mariner that's faced Jordan Wicks. But tonight's lineup, you got Hap, Suzuki, Bellinger in center, Morell at third, batting clean up. 
Swanson at fifth, Bush at first, Horner, Talkman as the DH, and then Gomes. Um, pretty regular lineup that we've seen. I I'm, I kind of wish Bush was batting at fourth, you know, or fifth. I mean, seems like he might be uh, good to have the lefty. But I mean, I'm not going to argue too much with all this. But uh, Bush has shown a lot of power this year. I guess Swanson has too, but. Just lefty, righty, lefty is the only reason I would do it the other way, <laughs> you know? Yeah, but, yeah. I I have liked how Craig Council has run the, uh, you know, some things change, you know, in the lineup day to day, but it's generally your same guys up top. He's not getting too fancy with it. He's just, he's running out what seems to be like good lineups every day. And... Just because your name's Horner doesn't mean you get to, you know, hit at the top of the lineup. You know, you're not hitting well, so you're hitting lower. And I love that. That's the way it really should be. And honestly, Horner isn't hitting that great. But if you give him a little bit of time and he's sort of facing, you know, maybe some, you know, a little bit more tired pitcher or he gets a chance to look at things, he'll be able to bring that stuff back up. Yeah, and if you look at uh, the Mariners, you got uh, Julio Rodriguez, their center fielder. He's having trouble getting going like Horner, betting 196, OPS of 471. You look at Horner, he's down there too, 167, 556 OPS. Another one is Bellinger batting under 200. Um, kind of That's a bit of a going. surprise. Yeah. So, and it's only a couple weeks, so, you know, we'll wait to see, but if you look at that Mariners lineup, oh my God, dude, like a lot of 100s in their averages. Their leadoff hitter is batting 140. Crawford? Right. That's not yeah. good. Not what, good at all. What, but, you know, since we're talking about this, like, real quick, let's, I want to give a shout out because we really haven't mentioned him all day. Christopher Morell, just, he is killing it. He's absolutely killing it. He's, he looks great at the plate. And I'm sorry, people are still with this fucking narrative that he can't play third. He's playing okay third. Like, he's not gold glove, but he's playing an okay third. Like it made, made a nice barehanded play the other night. Yeah, made uh, one moving to his right and then having to throw back across his body. Yeah, his, strong, his arm is strong. You know, Nobody's going to argue that. It's just not as accurate as you might like it to be. <laughs> well, ag again, plug for another, for another podcast on the Bleacher Bunch Network. If you're not following everybody, you should be. You and Sarah talking on Bleed Cubby Blue or uh, Cup of Cubby Blue. They took away basically an entire year of development for him yeah so that they could do this stupid magical thing and yeah and look i 100 yeah. percent agreed and this was sarah's take was that they took away this time for him to develop and that was what last year should have been yeah but that's david big dumb bald david ross yeah I mean, he took away the all. We had an opportunity last year with no real expectations to I mean, have a lot of young guys play and figure out where they were, and we're now doing that. I'm going to tell year. you the same thing that I told Sarah on the on Ballhawk Corner, which she was saying the exact same thing. I'm like, you gotta let it go. It's over. We can bitch about that and have that be why Christian Morrell isn't where we would like him to be. But he is where he is right now. So I'm personally sick of hearing the narrative about – I'm sick of everything about last year. Last year sucked. I did not enjoy last year. I would like to never talk about anything that happened last year again. Period. End of story. Like, uh, the swear jar now includes David Ross, <laughs> Eric Cosmer, <laughs> uh, Trey Mancini. Uh, uh, the swear jar is filling up, and I'm sick of it. I don't yeah. want to hear about 2023 anymore. It sucked. Everett, uh, Everett Tosher says, Morell is getting better, I think. Yeah, Agreed. I, I agree. And so did so did Magical when they gave him a chance. And I wish it happened last year, too, but whatever. 
Yeah. But, but um, it, it, well, I guess my biggest issue is that like everybody says, oh, Hap's a gold glover. Dansby's a gold glover. Horner's a gold glover. Say is good at his spot. Bellinger's good at his spot. And it feels like they can screw up, right? They can have, they can get hit in the head with a ball or they can, uh, you know, make an error. They can do it. And nobody says they should bench them. But like Morell, it's almost like he's never had a good play in his entire life. And he only has bad plays if you listen to how people talk about it. And that is what drives me nuts. Just because somebody told you he's not good at that position doesn't mean you have to fucking believe it. Watch the game. Watch yeah. when he gets his opportunities. Uh, yeah, Bernie Barrett says, move on. Are, are you saying move on with the show? Because I agree, because the game is literally starting to get a man. Okay, yeah, let's, let's so, move on. Yeah. What are we going to do here? Uh, well, I think we got to cut some stuff. Yeah, we got to cut most of the entire show at this point <laughs> because the kids, <laughs> we, it's over. Um, I I will say this that uh, if you want to know what's going to happen in these other games and and get a recap and also the previews of the games coming up, Imanaga versus Emer Emerson Hancock and uh, Thomas Bartholomew Dingleberry. Uh, otherwise known as TBD up against old friend Luis Castillo, which is happening Sunday, then you should listen to Cubs Pod and become a Patreon supporter at patreon.com slash Sunranto and you get the RSS feed right to your inbox with zero ads. Um, uh, I, how about this? It, after but we play the Mariners, Cubs Shredamus would like to chime in and let you know what's happening next. So let me just uh, play. He, he made it. He sent in his video. So here we go. Liberal snowflakes are scared of Corona. Joe Biden's brain's in a coma. Cubs won't catch a break playing near Kerry Lake in her home state of Arizona. Go Cubs. Okay. Not only can Cubsterdamus not truly predict the future he's just reading the fucking schedule as we all know this he can't he this guy i don't know why you keep paying him to come on this fucking show he comes in he tells us shit we already know and now he's talking about corona we're like he's four not years away from that shit now man yes i get it people die every day from the coronavirus but we ignore it now like, we're to the point where we ignore dead people. But fucking this dude wants to keep bringing this shit up I already told four him years that, down well, the road. You should have read his first poem. I made him rewrite it. <laughs> I made him rewrite it because he had a whole thing about uh, the stolen election. And I oh, was like, dude, I, I can't. Dude, here's the thing about Cubs Your Jobs. He was off the show for a while, and I was like, what happened to him? He wasn't calling in. And what I found out is uh, he was actually detained and questioned for January 6th. And oh. yeah, they, they caught him at the Capitol. He was riding around on Nancy Pelosi's magic carpet, which I didn't even know she had, but apparently she's got one too. And uh, he was trying to steal it. And he was like, this is my magic carpet. And it was apparently Nancy Pelosi's. He took it right out of the freaking Capitol. Well, and luckily for Cub Sardamas, through that whole investigation, they found out that he had an interpreter and he was able to blame the whole thing on him. Yeah. He was just covering for his interpreter. Like it yeah. was. Now he's yeah. back on the show. So, uh, <laughs> Ranter Fest is coming up and that's going to be the weekend of May 31st through June 2nd. We're having going to have a lot of fun. If you want to check out what it's all about. Sunranto.com slash Ranter Fest. Um, we're going to go to the games. We're going to watch some comedy with Eric Wheelow, Billy DeVore, and Joe Kilgown. Bleacher Bum Band's going to play on Friday night. We're going to have a live podcast celebrating our 1,000th episode. We're going to play games. We're going to do live bitch clock. It's going to be a star-studded event. Get your tickets now. We've already sold quite a few, actually. Um, so I can only fit 100 people. That's not a lot. It, so get your tickets now. Uh, what can I say? If I have to take it off sale after, after 100. So yeah come yeah come hang out with us it's going to be it's <laughs> going to be fun 
yeah we're I, i'm excited i'm Joey, i'm really into this i like i i can't i hope i get to a game before that but that might be my first game joey w says we're going to drink some beer i totally agree with him um and uh but david elliott points out oh god we don't want to hear anything about anyone riding on pelosi's magic carpet <laughs> which is also a great point um, i i don't know i just got really excited i'm i'm thinking pelosi's magic carpet and uh nancy reagan's skills well, you well skills yeah you know about it <laughs> <laughs> you said that with a knowing knowing Dumb. Yes, I, so I'm 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 thinking. Look, hey, I for all of you young guys out there, don't be looking down on the older ladies. They know what they're doing. Yeah, they got experience. <laughs> so, um, all right, we got to pick a Cubsler uh, champion. And um, oh, one oh, actually, one more announcement. I, for, I forgot to say, uh, I just opened a show. It's called Nana. It is at Trapdoor Theater. I hope you all come. I'm going to put up a poster of it right now. It's really good. I wrote a lot of music for it. Um, it's directed by my wife, Nicole. A lot of you guys know her. Uh, and uh, it's freaking awesome. It's a great show. And I think you'll really enjoy it. So come see it. Trapdoor Theater Thursdays through Saturdays for the next six, six weeks. Come on through. It's in Bucktown, neighborhood of, neighborhood of Chicago. You guys should come. What a great weekend. Go to a Cubs game during the day. And then, you know, either the next day or at night, go to Trapdoor Theater. It's a fun night. Great uh, day. I can promise uh, light nudity. So you got that going for you. Now, I don't even know what light nudity means. You got to get it. So uh, <laughs> here's the, here are all the winners for the Cubsler, but you want to give us some of the, uh, the last week Cubsler question. Okay. I got this go. right away. Okay. So this was easier and you see that we have a lot more people and okay. So an all-star in 61 before expanding like a sailor eating spinach hired in 88 honored in 89 done in 91. His head made helmets mandatory. So this, this is uh, Zimmer. And so he was a Cubs all-star in 1961, but he got drafted by the Mets. So when they did the expansion draft, he had to go to the Mets. And then they ended up like trading him that same year to somebody else. I don't even fucking know anymore. Uh, but then the thing that, I think gave it away for everyone is like a sailor eating spinach. Yeah, Popeye, Popeye yeah. was Don. It. it was Don Zimmer's like nickname. And then, uh, and then hired in 88, honored in 89. He was hired by the Cubs to manage in 88. He won manager of the year in 89 when they went to the uh, playoffs. And then uh, they fired him by 91. He had a short run. And then his head made helmets mandatory. So, Don Zimmer actually got hit in the head uh, prior to helmets and he was in a coma for like two weeks. Oh man. Like, he was done. And he, and, and this was not late in his career. This is like 1958 and he came out and played baseball for another, you know, five years or something like that. But he went down and almost died. And that incident through, like, it didn't happen immediately, but that was the incident that instigated the, you have to have a helmet when you bat. And it was Don Zimmer getting hit in the head. Well, you know, the famous, uh, I'm trying to pull it up real quick, is uh, this picture of Don Zimmer being thrown to the ground <laughs> by Pedro I, Martinez I, in the Red Sox-Yankees fight. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that was fucked up, yeah. dude. I'm sorry. That, I mean, I understand that he's coming at you, and anybody that's coming at you, you have every right to freaking throw on the ground. Because even an right. old man like Don Zimmer could probably do some damage if he's he's been in a few scrapes <laughs> in his life. You know, I just think it's so funny. I I purposefully let left that out of it, and you're like, no, I gotta I gotta me, bring it in. Let me show you what it looks like. When an old man with brain damage gets tossed, gets tossed on his face. 
by a, young by a professional athlete. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Don Zimmer's a professional athlete too, kinda. Well, yeah. But and you know what? Hey, I don't blame Pedro for that at all. Zimmer went after him. What, yeah. what was what Zimmer thinking? Like, why yeah. was he going after anybody? Yeah, it was well, insane. I tell you, I've I've seen things like that this happen where like somebody that normally you shouldn't fight gets thrown to the ground because they're coming at you. And I'm like, hey, if you're coming at me, I don't care who you are. You're going and, you if you get dropped, that's on you. Yeah, and, you know? and all he did was just kind of olay him <laughs> and he's an old man who had no balance and went down it's not like he then started kicking him while he was on the ground <laughs> yeah that's a different thing that like, would have been a different story he he's just... already dead <laughs> <laughs> all right so we had a lot of winners who got dodd zimmer um that rhymed bear uh bernie baron jeff bjorn david elliott mike waller chris salato donald rulis will mcmahon Jared Pat, John Pincus, Corey Furlong, Allison Mitchell, Scott Sowers, Ernesto Ambrosio, Joseph Caccioni, and that's a lot of winners, or that's a lot of uh, potential winners. It, it, it really is. Let's let's spin it and see who's going to win it. Well, that rhymed, too. God, we're just little poets, and we know it. <laughs> and the winner is Jeff Bjorn. Jeff who Bjorn. likes porn. <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to keep rhyming. Jeff Bjorn on the horn watching porn. Congratulations. And, and he is a two time winner. Uh, I Mr. have yet win to. does nothing but win. Jeff What's that? Bjorn. Jeff Bjorn. It, it, I mean, I am, am I right to think that uh, Jeff's won a lot of things? I. I don't know, like chance in the chat. Is that what you're talking I about? I, I lose track. I don't even remember what prizes we give. So at all Jeff, time. Jeff won a few weeks ago. Uh, I have yet to actually do his uh, his voicemail. I am like one, two, three, four. I'm five weeks behind on voicemails, but it's because I actually do try to get something interesting when I do it. So. You'll get yours. It's not just me going, uh, thanks for calling Jeff Bjorn, blah, blah, blah. No, well, yeah, I, it's much worse than that. It's way worse. <laughs> I make it so that it's unusable, but yeah. I hope that you enjoy it. I mean, when I did the, the first Corey Furlong, that was all about his website of, uh, Girls choking on hot dogs, right? Yeah, I was so confused. I had no idea what you're talking about. Oh, it's from the Field of Dreams. He helped you get engaged on the Field of Dreams, and you did it because he has a website, unfortunately called Girls Who Choke on Hot Dogs. I had no which, idea what you're talking about. It's that's the little girl in Field of Dreams. Have you never seen this movie? The little girl chokes on a hot dog. Oh, that's what you were talking about. <laughs> I don't remember that. I haven't seen Feel the Dreams for... I don't even like that movie. What? No. You got engaged yeah. on the field at the Field of Dreams. So and what? you're like, I don't even like that movie. Oh. Why didn't you fucking pick something else? I Does know. Nicole know this? Yes. <laughs> so She thinks it's funny, too. <laughs> so that it was an absolute surprise to her because she's like you don't even like this place we had never seen the movie <laughs> <laughs> are you kidding me i had seen it years and years ago in the theaters like when it first came out and i'd seen it on like tv here and there but i thought it'd be a fun place to go and see regardless of the movie i don't care about the movie but it's kind of funny that it is this. I, what I am a fan of is roadside attractions. <laughs> so you were sitting there. You were like, I could go to the Corn Palace, but that's like another 10 hours away. I don't even or I could go about. to Field of Dreams. Yeah, it's right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Look, anybody who cut out to watch the start of this game fucking missed out <laughs> jesus christ you yeah. don't even well, like you don't like the movie you hadn't seen it 
and you just went there to get engaged. Maybe the biggest question you'll ever ask in your life. Well, now something actually good happened there, as, a, <laughs> as opposed to that movie, which kind of blew. As, a, as opposed to a little girl who choked on a hot dog. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> so, once again, IFG is at this game. Here is her Venmo. Uh, I don't know if, if you want to give her some beer money. You didn't see Feel the Dreams. Yeah, I saw it, but like, you know, not recently. Not oh, within the last geez. 35 years or something. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> holy shit. I don't really have a TFC. Um, I think you just became one. Yeah, I am a living TFC. Uh, but <laughs> I do have this. I thought this was kind of funny is that uh, Chris Salato put this on the Sun Ranto Ranchers page on Facebook. And uh, Tuesday's reported attendance is the lowest for a Cardinals night game in nearly two decades at Bush Stadium and the fourth lowest in stadium history. The headline says Cardinals attendance drops to historic low during first homestand. You got to love it. Yeah. Oh, and this is the team that, not only was picked to win the division, but is still the Vegas odds on favorite to win the division. Are you kidding me? This team is, this team sucks. Best fans of baseball. Okay. So I, I have a TFC and uh, the TFC really, sometimes you come across one of the hottest takes you could possibly come across and you're like that has to be the tfc and that is this dude flash scooby carlos zambrano was otani before otani wow really now either that means that carlos zambrano had a an interpreter that he blamed for gambling <laughs> yeah. or i don't know because carlos zambrano could hit he was not otani he would Carlos Zambrano was not Otani as a pitcher or a hitter. <laughs> like neither one of those things was Carlos Zambrano. I no. loved Carlos Zambrano and he was good at both of those things. He was not Otani no. in either sense. So that was one of the hottest takes I think I've ever seen. Yeah, so. that that's a rough take. So hash, <laughs> hashtag chance in the chat. You could win a Frank chance postcard sent to you by me with a message of love and doom. I'm going to get those out really soon. Uh, I've got a bunch of uh, backlog mail. We're going to do this drawing right now. The, you you people have no idea all the work we have to put into this outside of the, the show is the funnest bit of what we do here. We. <laughs> <laughs> no, did it. Did it. He's like, fuck. So here we go. I'm gonna ju- I'm gonna draw it. <laughs> Hashtag field of dreams. Something's I'm I feel like uh is it work? Andy Wells is your winner no, tonight. I, I'm personally not Am seeing I it. I think you just made that name up. We're having internet oh, issues. No, Andy Wells is the winner. No, I'm having yeah, I'm having internet issues. I think I'm having trouble. Uh, sh- I think sharing the screen. It's I'm getting spinny beach ball rainbow of death right now. Yeah, the, and the, I actually the, can't. The even... baseball gods have told us we've overstayed our welcome, and we need to go watch the Cubs. Well, I can't even end the show because I'm already on the. I'm I'm stuck on this freaking uh, chance screen. Oh well, then I guess me I, to the I, rescue I, 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 here. I, well, well, hold on. What's our what's okay, our okay. what song do you want to? Oh, you're back. I was gonna say, what song do you want to go out on? Do you see it now, Andy Wells as the winner? Yes, we do see it. All right, good. All right, cool. Andy, Andy Wells. Congratulations! Congratulations! Well, that that was the most suspense first, we've ever had for a winner. First, I want to show everybody what I got in my hot little hands. Look at this, Ron Santo, Matt Cameron. This is one of the prizes. That we're giving away to the Patreon patron of the month. Every single month, these are about to start going out as well. You also get to win an In the Clutch t shirt. So just sign up at patreon.com slash sunranto. Get in on it. 
you want to be a part of it, be one of the 109 cool kids that hang out with us during the game on the Discord. Um, anyway, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, we're over. The show is over. Yeah, this the- has been brought to you by the Bleacher the Bunch. I'm going to play the song. I'm going to play the Otani song because uh, I, th- I still think he's a gambler. I still think he pays that. <laughs> I still think he's guilty until proven innocent. Here we go. Spagog, everybody. Uh, go Cubs. Spagog. When you owe Bookie his money, just call Otani. The mob won't break your lace. When you lost a ton, you can count on Shohei. If you're a degenerate gambler and the mafia won't kill you, Shohei's got the funds.